first, you know, my first question to you is, if I ever make a movie, can you be my cinematographer? <laughs> Let me see that script first. <laughs> Let me see the script now. Well, I mean, I, I want to talk about your story, though, because I know you, you're from Louisville. We're, we're close to the same age and uh -huh. everything, so I know you've, you've come from the era where the biggest, uh, you know, black cinematographer at the time was probably, like, Ernest Dickinson or mm. somebody. Like, what was your inspiration? Like, what led you to go down this this road for this career? Oh, all those guys. I mean, Malik, Ernest, AJ, Remy, um, Johnny Sim, you know, Johnny, all those, I mean, they're all inspirations, you know. That's my pedagogy around cinematography is formed by um, direct and indirect relationships with those with those folks I just mentioned. Right. And so, uh, no, I mean, that's the only reason why I'm even doing this. The only reason why I even know it's possible to even do this, not just as a black cinematographer, um, of course, but even as a cinematographer, is because, you know, they were photographing work as a young black male I could relate to. And so, when, you know, it was our duty to go see Spike Lee's films. And so when we went to see the films, it was, you know, I was acutely aware that the, 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 the vision, the image-making capacity of those films felt like things that I hadn't bear witness to before. And so, you know, I was always wondering, what, what is the cinematographer, what's the director of photography? And it was great to know that, um, you know, those, those, those names on the screen were, were men that looked like men from my community. And yeah. so, um, yeah, those cats, are, they, they made it possible. You know, I'm only here because of them, you know. And Do you remember, like, which film or, or TV or something that where you, where you first, like, really grasp but that, that there was somebody at the helm of the camera like making these images instead of just watching it as a viewer like when did it open up to you like wow who is this guy that's doing this you remember like the film that uh, yeah i mean i mean there, there were several but i mean i think school days was probably the first film where i just i didn't understand what was happening with my body as i watched the film like i, I it was the first time that i you know, I said to myself, like, something's different, something, I'm seeing something different, you know, I'm, and because I'm seeing something different, I'm feeling something different. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that carried on to, you know, I think, you know, School Days had its own version of that in my life, and then Mo Better Blues really cracked it open for me, where I just felt like, wow, that's black folk getting together in the one room, organizing themselves around a particular idea in order to, um, and using images as a way to communicate that idea um, in a really special, um, um, free way. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and then you know, then I went to college, and then I saw the work of Hailey, I saw Hailey Greenman's work, and then that sort of opened up a whole other door, you know, and a whole other door in my mind about what cinema, what film is. But yeah, School Days is probably the first film you went that. To college was cinematography. I didn't. I just went to college just to go to college because you had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to go to college. You know, yeah. what I mean, I had to get out the house and go to school, but. Uh, and you know, and and when I got to Howard, it wasn't I wasn't quite clear that's what I wanted to do, and that came way, way, way later, many years later, after finishing undergrad and and kind of finishing grad school is when I realized that all right, I'm gonna try this out. But something I've always you know I've always respected cinematography. You know, once you know once I got to school, I realized that it was it had its own special place in the filmmaking process, and then I needed to pay really close attention to what people were doing, and so. Simple, I can't tell. Dr. Banks? Hey, 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 what are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. They need to see me. Take it off her headmaster, Dr. Banks. Are you okay? You're risking contamination. They need to see me. Dr. Banks? She's walking towards the screen. <sighs> I mean, discovering the Canon Scoopic and the Bolex were were, were, were were total realizations of what the process could be, you know? Because then they were small, they were compact, you put it in places where you couldn't put cameras for, you know, you could, you could, you could use the camera in a way that, um, 
you know, the resonance of the image was similar to the films that you respected, but you also put the camera in places that uh, were reflective, reflection of our generational sensibility on how, 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 um, how, how, how films could be shot, you know? And, you know, we had, we all had Malik in our head when we were, we had AJ Malik and Ernest in our head when we were in school, so we were all trying to figure out ways to get our, our images closer to what they were, what they were creating really important for us, you know, as a way to sort of pay homage and, so, and also really challenge ourselves to do better. Um, but yeah, I would say the can, yeah, Cannon Scoopic and the um, the Bolex. That's that's the beginning of the end. You've done some amazing projects. Uh, I think the first time I took notice to you was uh, Mother of George and then, uh, Most Violent Year and Selma were you know great. But the Arrival does it? Where did? How does the the scope of your job change depending on like the film? I mean. It, you didn't have as broad a landscape to do in Selma with, with some of the shots. I mean, right. How, how does it change when you have something like Arrival? Mm, it, it's, you know, it's very different in terms of in terms of genre. You know, which has its own like, you know, if if you if you shocker yourself the genre, obviously that sort of determines the approach. But at the core of the filmmaking of the you know the, the process for me at the core of it is just being truthful and honest to the material, and so. Um, and that way it hasn't changed, you know, and, you know, the scope of the project in terms of budget, budgets, et cetera, that, that's changed, but how we make the film doesn't really, doesn't change, you know, because the projects that get bigger, bigger doesn't mean I'm going to bring 10 more people into the fold. Yeah. It just means that the thing that I really understand and the thing that, not understand, I'm trying to understand the thing that I'm working on as an image maker, it just gives me more time, a little bit more time and a little bit more a few more hands to help sort of sculpt and craft the moment that I would do it on if I was shooting just a half a million dollar film. Um, and then, you know, working with somebody like Denis that I think we have very, very, very similar taste in f what films, the films we like, the films we want to make, um, and that just enhances the process. But in, so in that sense, it just, you know, nothing, I mean, you know, I'm still, I still feel like I'm making films with my friends. And, and that's, and when I make films, when I make films with my friends, I'm free. And so, I just, you know, I don't want to arrest that. I don't want, I don't want that to go away. And so it's, for me, it's just, a, I'm picking projects that will continue to allow me to, to, do, to do that. Yeah, I know you have the Han Solo movie coming mm -hmm. up. And yep. Everybody's kind of excited about that. And now it's Donald Glover. I mean, I can't wait to see you. Right, that. right. I mean, anything where you have space and everything just seems like as a cinematographer, you, you get to do like a lot, a lot, a lot more with the images, you know. How, another question I yeah, have, yeah. curiously, is uh, drones. like. 10, 15 years ago, they were nowhere in people's minds, and if you had a film, they had to use some aerial shots, your budget was shooting way up. Right. In the age of like drones and stuff, is that something now that cinematographers need to practice as a tool and be able to utilize, or? Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, drones is, you know, you know, drones are one particular tool, but I think, you know, what we're finding is that, um, you know, the tools that may the films we liked, the films that sort of like propelled us into making films that had all, you know, that had the, the sort of scale to them that seemed sort of unachievable to us as independent, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, young filmmakers. Uh, that, you know, those things that just seem totally inaccessible to us are accessible to us now. So, but I think ultimately it's about how we use them that, that is where I think the real challenge comes. It's like, are we, are we doing aerial shots because it, 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 we're mimicking things that we've seen before, or we're using it in a special way, or we're using it to communicate a real unique idea, a real, uh, is, it, is, it a, is it an extension of our own unique voice as an image maker? So I think what we have to do is create a process where we demystify the tools early on and really connect to who we are as storytellers. I think that's the hardest thing to crack. The tools are like, they give you a manual, you know what I mean? They give you a manual on how to use the tools so that you can, you can demystify really quick. The part that's hard to demystify is who are you and where, where's your personal resonance in the stories that you're telling. So if a drone can help you do that, then more power to you, use it, you know? And, 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 uh, and, and I'd be ex I'm excited to sort of bear witness to how you, how you use that as long as it's anchored in your own self-discovery and your own accent yeah. as, as an image maker, as a, as a filmmaker, as a storyteller. So, uh, and then it's a long question, so I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But, all right, so I know there's probably like cinematography, Bibles and everything, but if you could just give like three 
rules or three suggestions that a young cinematographer should really focus on when making their next project, wherever they are around the world looking mm. at this interview. Mm. What, what were three things you would say that they should probably focus on when trying to co compose these images? I don't know if I have three. I have one. I have one, I, and, 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 and I think it mirrors the, the last question. And I think the only thing I can really, only advice I can offer to any filmmaker, image maker, artist is that um, having knowledge of self, knowing who you are and where you come from is, the, is the, the most important tool you have. It's more important than the camera. It's more important than the script. It's more important than the sound design. It's more important than the editing because all of those elements are informed by your accent. So before you, before you invest in the camera, before you invest in writing the script, ask yourself real serious questions about who you are and the stories that you want to tell. If you don't see yourself in the story, if the story is not a reflection of a world that you want to create, it's probably not a story worth telling. That's just me, that's just my own bias in terms of why I feel like filmmaking is an important art form, why it's an important expression, because it gives us another ability, like, like music, uh, like painting, like sculpture, um, to to shroud and, 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 and give the world an interpretation of the world, the future, the world, an imagination of a world that we want. Um, and so I think it's, you know, I, th I think knowing who you are, where you come from is the most important thing. And before you, you know, before you go write a rival, tell a story about your grandmother, tell a story about your father, tell a story about your ancestors. That's, those are the stories, those are the stories we tell first. And then films like Arrival have a different meaning. You can bring more purpose to those films because you connect. For me, when I made a, as I was making Arrival with Denis, I was thinking about my children. I was thinking about the mortality of my children. I was thinking about my own mortality. You know what I mean? And then when I was thinking about those things, I was concerned about Denise's children. I was concerned about Denise's children's mortality. And so those things don't come you know, you have to live life. You have to be seasoned in life in order to, like, I think, come to a realization of those things in your art form. And I think the way you become seasoned in your art form, the way you come uh, partially realized, not fully realized, partially realized in your art form is when you are honest with who you are and you are relentless with your own accent, accent and your own vision in your, in your, art, in your storytelling, art-making process. And so, yeah, and that's what I would offer. Well, thanks for that. Nice that's a great movie. I mean, the cinematography is definitely way above the bar. Oh, uh, great, I really man. enjoyed it, so congratulations. Oh, man. thank you. you. Keep on watching, man. You just keep on shooting. I oh, appreciate it, man. All right, brother. All right, brother. Thank you.